Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering and Assessment Channel. As you know, these days we are focusing on the module of Chemical Reaction Engineering. So in this regard, we are bringing the lecture number 45 for our valuable viewers. And in today's course coverage, we will be moving in depth in chapter number 8, which is multiple reactions. And we will be seeing how we can determine the value of selectivity or how we can develop the relationship of selectivity for parallel reactions considering that there is a single reactant in the system. In the upcoming lecture, we will see for multiple reactants, but first we have to understand how we can develop it for the single reactant and the, using this concept, we will be doing the next lectures. So if you have not subscribed yet to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. So let us assume two parallel reactions. The reactant A goes to D and D is our desired product. The rate constant for this reaction is represented by K of D. Then there is a second reaction which is for the undesired product and the rate constant is represented by K of U. So accordingly, applying the rate law for R of D and R of U, which is the rate of formation of D and rate of formation of U, so R of D will be K of D, which is the reaction rate constant, into C of A raised to power alpha 1. So for this one, we have defined order as alpha 1 and for obviously this one we have defined order as alpha 2. So R of u is equal to K of u C A raised to power alpha 2. And if we have to write down the total rate of disappearance of A, it will be the rate of formation of D and rate of formation of u. So accordingly R of D is K of D C A of A raised to power alpha 1 and R of u is K of u C A raised to power alpha 2 and the sum is equal to the rate of disappearance of A which is our limiting reactant or we can say it is a single reactant system. So it is the reactant in the and finally writing the equation for the selectivity which is S D over U is equal to R of D over R of U and R of D is equal to K of D C A raised to power alpha 1 and K R of U is equal to K of U C A raised to power alpha 2. Or we can write it as SD by U is equal to RD over RU and that is equal to KD over KU and CA whole raised to power alpha 1 minus alpha 2. So this is the finalized relation which we will be using and we obviously want to maximize the value of selectivity because of various reasons explained earlier in the previous lecture. Now we will be dealing with the four systems, four cases and we will see how we can maximize the value of the selectivity. So number one case is that alpha 1 is greater than alpha 2 or we can say A is equal to alpha 1 minus alpha 2. Now how we can describe it from this like alpha 1 minus alpha 2 will be equal to A. Now if you look at this relationship that the instantaneous selectivity is directly proportional to the concentration of A. So it means that if we want to increase the value of selectivity we have to keep the concentration of reactant A as high as possible during the reaction. For example, in gas phase system, we have to run the system without inert and at high pressure. And in liquid phase system, the use of diluent should be kept to the minimum so that the concentration of A should be highest. And the reactor type for this should be the batch or plug flow reactor. Now, if we go to the second part, which will be obviously opposite of it, that alpha 1 should be less than alpha 2. So accordingly, B is equal to alpha 2 minus alpha 1. Now this alpha 1 is less than alpha 2. So this will go to the denominator or we can say it like that, that SD by U is equal to RD over RU, KD over KU, C is equal to alpha minus alpha 2. That will be minus B because B is alpha 2 minus alpha 1. So minus B will be alpha 1 minus alpha 2 or we can say 1 over C is to power B. Now this case will be opposite of what we have just seen in case 1 that we have to keep here the concentration of A as low as, as possible or as low as possible opposite to that where we have to keep the concentration high. So now the opposite of that happened like in gas phase system we have to make sure that the system is at inert and at low pressure. While in liquid phase system the use of diluent should be kept to a maximum so that the concentration of A should be minimum and we have to use CSTR or recycled reactor in the system. Moving on to the case 3, this will be based on the activation energies for 
desired reactions and undesired system. So if the desired is greater than undesired, then what we can see that with the increase in temperature, the selectivity value is increasing. So it means that we have to obviously keep the temperature as high as possible to maximize the value of the selectivity. And we can say that the K of D increases more rapidly with increasing temperature than that of the K of Q. This is the case number 3 and obviously case 4 will be opposite of that and that will be that E of U is greater than E of D. So with the increase in temperature here the selectivity will decrease. So we have to keep the temperature at low value. However, the system temperature should not be so low that the desired action does not proceed to any significant extent. So obviously we have to maximize the selectivity but we should not select or we should not place such temperature in the system where the reaction does not proceed. So de definitely that is a tricky part for case number 4. So this is overall concept of selectivity for parallel reactions for single reactant. At first we have developed a relationship which is this one for assuming that there is a desired reaction and undesired reaction for single reactant. And then we have developed four cases that how we can maximize the selectivity that we can increase the concentration of A in first case or in second case we can decrease the concentration of A obviously for gas and liquid fuel system the scenario will be different while in the first case we have to use the batch or plug flow reactor while in the second case we have to use the CSTR in the third case we have to make sure that the temperature is high because the activation energy of D is greater than activation energy of U while in fourth case the temperature should be low but it should not be so low that the reaction does not proceed. So these are the four different concepts and we will be using these concepts in our coming lecture where we will be dealing with the multiple reactants in the system. So I hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture. If you have any queries, feedback, suggestion, please provide it in the comment box and I would be happy to answer it. So that's it from today's lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye, stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel.